you know, this is not this is not a country that that's showing the intellectual dexterity to uh, uh, to really play the role that uh, the document assumes assumes it can and should. Foreign policy doesn't get nearly as much coverage as one would think with South Africa's pro-Palestinian stance. But two recent events shed light on South Africa's foreign policy moves going forward. Helping me to unpack these is Terence Corrigan from the Institute of Race Relations. Terence, the first instance was Dr. Naledi Pandor, the Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, speaking to a conference of Palestinian heads of mission. And the second was the publication of a document by the Department of International Relations and Cooperation on South Africa's, quote, national interest, end quote. Firstly, these two events and perhaps Ms. Pandor's comments, Dr. Pandor's comments, should I say, at the conference. Doctor. What, uh, what do those indicate to you on South Africa's stance on foreign policy? Well, I think let's let's start with the document on on the national interest. This has been an issue that's been sort of circling our policy um, our policy universe for for many years. Um, how does South Africa see its role in the world? How does South Africa see its 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 interests as a country? And this document was interesting because it tries to it tries to set this out. Now, contrary to what uh, what some commentators have said, this isn't the first time it's been done. In fact, some of the uh, some of the documents seems to be very uh, closely lifted from the 2011 white paper. Um, and you, we can go back through things like the NEPAD initiative through the uh, white paper in the 1990s. Um, but uh, it's it is revealing that uh, they've put pen to paper and they've now um, they've not they've now tried to define it. And essentially. Um, it's not a bad. Um, it, it's not a bad set of uh, set of ideas. For me, what what stands out is the is the sense that there needs to be a clear linkage between your domestic well being and your and your foreign policy. In other words, your engagement with the world must be to the benefit of your um, of your domestic population. And they come up with a list of sort of five areas that um, that that South Africa. Uh, needs to engage in to advance its its interests, or let's say five sets of interests. It's political, it's security, human development, economic, and ideological or global interests. Um, now, it's South Africa in this sense should be encouraging trade. It should be encouraging encouraging investment. Um, it should be in, engaging in 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 public diplomacy to speak directly to people uh, uh, to people abroad. Its missions should be uh, communicating South Africa's policy positions and explaining them, you know, where this is both well received and not so well received. Um, it needs to maintain cordial relations with countries, uh, with, well, with, well, with all countries, but, you know, even where, uh, where South Africa has, has um, uh, severe disagreements. And also, um, and this is where the, where the ideological stuff comes in, you know, it, 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 it wants to project it's it's uh, moral imperatives abroad. Now this is important because this is kind of what what, uh, uh, what we saw on display um, when uh, Dr. Pandor addressed the the conference of the Palestinian heads of mission. Very strident, very uncompromising, um, very uh, binary. It's all it's it's black and white, sides of the angels, side of uh, um, uh, side of the devils, um, and we have people who will uh who will say well you know south africa uh, you know has 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 no interest there i'm in a way um i'm i'm, I'm not entirely unsympathetic to that I, I don't think south africa has very much to offer that particular situation i don't think it has any influence or the the historical background we can talk about that if you want but i think you need to you need to understand that ideologically for the south african government and for the ruling party this is and this this is a part of the uh, national interest as they as they understand it. The national interest document, for instance, talks about how South Africa needs to assist smaller countries that are oppressed or that uh, don't have a voice to, you know, um, uh, take their take their right their rightful place. Str what, what struck me is that it seems the only place South Africa really has any heft in applying itself is on the, is on that ideological terrain. We are we are not in this uh, and this 
comes out of the NDP, um, we are not using our, our global presence, one of the largest in the world, incidentally. I mean, it's, it's, it's on a par with, um, uh, with the United States in terms of the number of missions. We are not, we, we are not attracting investment through it. We are not um, expanding trade. Uh, we are not man maintaining uh, a particularly uh, cordial relations with some uh, uh, with some countries, some of which, like the United States, are amongst our biggest trade and investment partners. Um, the ideological imperatives seem to have um, seem to have simply simply swamped those. Um, uh, even in Africa, where South Africa does have an um, uh, have an outsized influence and it's an outsized presence. It's often, it's often seen, once again, this is the National Development Plan, seen as a bully. Um, it's, it's diplomats are seen as lacking understanding of African geopolitics. Um, Security-wise, well, you know, we sit with a chaotic situation in Zimbabwe and insurgency in, um, in, in Mozambique. South Africa, at one stage, played a very, very important role in peace brokering and, and, and peacekeeping. I'm not sure that we really have even have the raw muscle to do that anymore. I mean, there was a report the other day that 3,000 soldiers are going to be, or 3,000 uh, uh, employees of the the uh, Defense Department are being um, are, are to be retrenched. You know, this is not this is not a country that that's showing the intellectual dexterity to uh, uh, to really play the role that uh, the document assumes assumes it can and should. So very much a case of putting the cart before the horse. I, I guess we see this in other things that you've written about, especially in terms of the developmental state, where you want the state to, to have the capacity to help infrastructure development and investment, that sort of thing, but not doing the basics right. So not ensuring that you've got actual resources and expertise to get those infrastructure plans going, for example. It's well one get having the vision without the practicality. Now, Terence, linking this document to US Secretary of State Anthony Blinken's recent visit to South Africa, and he's also visiting other African countries, do you think that this document and perhaps some of Dr. Pando's other comments, um, do they take cognizance of the importance of Secretary Blinken's visit? Do you think his visit is trying to catch up in terms of some of the comments that the South African government made after the Russian invasion of Ukraine? How do you foresee that relationship? And do you see a big risk in terms of losing, as you said, one of South Africa's biggest investment and trading partners? Look, I think that uh, to understand that relationship you need to kind of go right back to the right back to the 1990s, and I think you know it's put put cards on the table. Um, as an exiled organization, the ANC probably had very little reason to 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 love the United States, and once again, this is partly for reasons of geopolitics, um, and partly for 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 reasons of ideology. Um, I'm somewhat familiar with 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 East German political writings, and you can see a lot of that coming very very strongly. Just the terminology used in ANC documents today. Um, the idea, the, the, the concept of imperialism features very, very heavily. This isn't, you know, um, the, the East Germans didn't so much talk about East and West, but imperialism and socialism. And there's, this is um, uh, phrased somewhat differently in, a, in, 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 in the ANC's worldview, but I think the, the, the logic is, is, is pretty much there. Um, President Mandela, however, realized that South Africa needed to court these countries that, that, that had the money and the expertise and the global influence. It didn't make any sense to, to, to alienate um, uh, a country like the US, particularly as South Africa did have aspirations to play a, um, uh, to play a large role in the global stage. And, you didn't want to uh, uh, torpedo your 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 um, prospects out of the um, out of the gate. Um, under President Mbeki, um, uh, Professor Adam Habib had a had a very interesting comment that he wanted to engage. So yes, there, there was this this conflictual relationship, but also a willingness to talk. But I think the problem is that we didn't we just didn't build a proper di a proper diplomatic core. And I think now we we left with the ideological posturing. Now, if you look at what what um, Dr. Pandor said. My sense is that largely um, it draws somewhat on the on, on the document and that a lot of her comments were about South Africa's internal interests. But I do rather get the sense that there were a number of, and I'm talking about, about, about the public conversation, not what they said in private. There did seem to be a few barbers flying backwards and forwards. The comment about the specific comment about um, uh, about the Palestinians. Um, but yeah, yes, you know, and I I I think that 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 while I can sort of understand the ANC's let's say discomfort with 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 uh, uh, with with some of its Western partners, 
I think it is a far more nuanced and far more intelligent approach. But I just don't think we have the we have the wherewithal to 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 achieve that at the moment. Thank you very much for watching. Let us know in the comments below what you think of South Africa's foreign policy moves. How do you think this might change in the coming weeks and years ahead? Also, before you leave, please remember to like the video and also subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not yet done so. Thank you very much for watching today's video. And until next time, this has been Chris Hudson for the Center for Risk Analysis. Take care.